So let's go into an example using the two film theory just to illustrate and then quickly sum up what we have talked about so far with regards to mass diffusivity. Okay, let's consider a situation where you have water evaporating and you have determined a mass transfer coefficient to 0 0.05 meters per second and you have a temperature of 25 degrees in the air and the water. Uh, so from that, let's try to calculate an imagined boundary layer. So we have a situation which might not be well defined, but let's try to calculate a boundary layer from this situation. Okay, so uh, we here have a situation where we actually have Stefan diffusion, right? But let's uh, ignore that and say that, okay, let's express this anyway as if the concentration gradient is linear, because that's what the two film theory says, right? So let's uh, look at the equation for equimodal counter diffusion. It looks like this. And the equation when we use mass transfer coefficients, it looked like this. Okay, so we put in the numbers. We have we look up the diffusivity for water in air, and luckily for 25 degrees, we actually have that here. So it's 2.6, 2.6 10 to the power minus 5 square meter per second. And uh, we will assume now that Sherwood equals 1, so that the two film theory fit, fits perfectly, but hey, that's not really the case. Um, but we don't have any handle on that. So, okay, let's just assume that oh, it's probably somewhere similar to one. If that is a, a nice assumption, which it might not be, but if it's a nice assumption, then uh, we simply can calculate the, the film thickness as the Sherwood number times the diffusivity divided with the mass transfer coefficient. And we assume that Sherwood is equals one. So we get one times 2.6 10 to the 1 minus 5 divided by 0 0.05 and we get a film thickness of 520 micrometers. And note here that d divided by the film thickness has the same unit as the mass transfer coefficient. It must have because the Sherwood number should be a dimensionless number, right? So what have you talked about uh, so far? We have talked about how to estimate mass diffusivity in gases using an advanced model that looks like this. And then we have talked about how to do the same thing for diffusivity in liquids. And then we said that we have to distinguish between a situation where we have a large molecule and a situation where we have a small molecule. For large molecules, we use Stoke-Einstein's equation and for small molecules, we use Wilkshang equation. And then we talked about mass transport in one dimension. I didn't actually say that we talked about one dimension, but we only talked about one dimension. And then we said that it's this equation here. And we found out that there are two special cases uh, that are rather simple compared to other things we could imagine. Uh, so one is when we have equimolar counter diffusion. So the mass transfer in one direction is exactly the same numerical value as the mass transfer rate in the other direction. And if we have that, we get the linear equation that looks like this. And if we instead have the other special case where one component is standing still, like air, and this flask here is essentially standing still and water is slowly evaporating out, then we instead get diffusion into stagnant component, which is also called Stefan diffusion. And then we talked about mass transfer coefficients. And that's an engineering approach uh, to situations where the film thickness might be not well defined, or it might be actually unmeasurable. It might actually be so that it would be, <laughs> uh, it, it's well defined perhaps, but we have no way of getting to measuring it. And we can also use it in situations where the theories we have don't 
explain things much. So then we take, okay, let's measure a mass transfer coefficient and we measure it uh, and hope that it stays the same. Uh, and if we change operating conditions, we might have to measure a new uh, mass transfer coefficient and perhaps we can see a relation between how the diffusivity changes and how the mass transfer coefficient changes. Uh, we also talked about the Sherwood number that relates the diffusivity and the mass transfer coefficient and you need a film thickness to calculate the Sherwood number and uh, you might find uh, for certain situation you might find uh, values in the literature that says that okay Sherwood number is close to one for this case and what comes next is that we talk about other theories. We will talk about the penetration theory, the boundary layer theory, and lastly, Reynolds analogy and Chilton-Coburn's analogy.